my name is Karina Molsing, co-editor of the Brazilian English Language Teaching Journal. We're here today with Professor Ann O'Keefe. She's a senior lecturer in Applied Linguistics and English Language Teaching and the Department of English Language and Literature at Mary Immaculate College. She's also the coordinator of the Intervarial Applied Corpus Studies Research Center and here we're here today at Newcastle University at the IVAX conference. Okay. So first I'd like to thank Professor O'Keefe for being here with us today and for accepting to do this interview. You're very welcome. <laughs> um, so we're going to talk a little bit about pragmatics and teaching for this special edition of BELT. Um, so we're just going to ask a few questions here. Um, our readers would like to know, uh, what's the importance of pragmatics for language teaching and language learning? And how does corpus linguistics contribute to these processes? Okay, well, it's a big question, but uh, just to give you um, hopefully a short and meaningful answer, um, pragmatics is about language in use. So often students are grammatically correct, but they are not using the language in the right way, in the right situation. Uh, a good example is uh, they may know how to use modal verbs, but they may say, uh, when they're inviting a friend to their house, you must come to my house at two o'clock. It's grammatically correct. Um, they might say, you will come to my house at one o'clock. That's grammatically correct. But you wouldn't have very many friends coming to your, your house if you keep telling them that they must come at one o'clock or that they will come at one o'clock. So while they may often know the language in a correct form, there's another level of meaning outside form, which is about the appropriate use in the appropriate situation. So very often, students don't take on this level of meaning. So sometimes while they're grammatically correct, what they say may be too direct for the situation mm -hmm. uh, that they're in. Mm -hmm. So they're not maybe hedging it, mm -hmm. um, or maybe they're using a word that, that makes it stronger, mm -hmm. though they didn't actually intend to, mm -hmm. or they're not using words that soften things, like, say, using vague terms, like, uh, there were about 16 people there, rather mm -hmm. than saying, very factually, a number, so very often times and numbers, we approximate them, just because it makes us sound less in your face. Right, less direct. Actual, <laughs> direct. Sometimes you need to be direct, but usually when you're talking to people in, in conversation, uh, you soften things. You soften yeah. things. Okay. And, and for teachers uh, teaching uh, pragmatics to foreign language learners, how does corporate, corpus oh. linguistics enter into the equation? Well, I guess that the example I gave earlier with um, will and, and must, um, that's a good example. We've looked at patterns uh, of learner language, and it's allowed us to see this, that students first learn the form, mm -hmm. but then they eventually uh, use the form, and then sometimes they, they keep using that same form, but it might not be in the right use. For example, mm -hmm. you must come for invitations, or you will come. Mm -hmm. And corpus linguistics allows us to look at learner language to see where they can use the correct form, but and okay. see whether it, they can use it pragmatically uh, in a correct way. So that's one dimension using corpus linguistics, using bodies of evidence from learner language to see how they are using or acquiring pragmatics mm -hmm. and at, at what level they acquire the pragmatic meanings. Mm -hmm. But of course, the the other side of using corpus linguistics. Uh, in terms of pragmatics, is looking at uh, native speaker use, not just English, could be any language, but looking at how people use language in everyday situations, in specialized situations, mm -hmm. and to see what the important pragmatics are within those situations. And, and often, you, with corpus linguistics, what you need, uh, if you're studying pragmatics, is, is a small, very situationally or contextually focused and defined mm -hmm. set of uh, language and then that will allow you to find patterns, pragmatic patterns that um, are specific to that context. Mm -hmm. um, for example, in uh, encounters in an electrical shop where somebody's selling things to you, they might use language 
which I found in research into these types of recordings. They're using, say, a pronoun. They're using your as a determiner. So they're, they're interactionally positioning you as the owner of the microwave. So you've got your microwave oven, you've got your grill, mm -hmm. you've got your timer, mm -hmm. you've got your setting for pop it's already in and my it's already possession. yours. Mm -hmm. And that, 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 that's a sales technique, really, right. but, but it's a pragmatically specialized use mm -hmm. of language that you don't find ordinarily. But because you've taken a close, small sample, you can really see the specialized pragmatic forms kind of come to the surface. Mm -hmm. And then that information can feed back, I guess, ultimately uh, in terms of teaching material. Um, you know, many language teachers have no background in linguistics. Is it possible for them to apply results from linguistic research in the classroom? Um, it's a really important question. I suppose the first thing we should acknowledge is that they may not, they may not all have studied linguistics, but I think anyone who's teaching a language, they intuitively have a huge amount of information in their, yeah, in their, in their intuition, their common sense about language, so they actually really do understand language. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that you probably agree that when you uh, explain something linguistically to a language teacher at a conference, they do get it. They do say, yeah, that really makes sense. Um, so um, I think it's really important for those working in the area of corpus linguistics to go to language conferences, language teaching conferences, to translate what they're finding into relevance for language teachers. Now, that doesn't always happen. You know, They, they stay in a specialised world, so I guess that one of the things that's important to me in my research. I do a lot of specialised research and specialised publications in that area, but I always try to also write, uh, because I come from a language teaching background, I also try to write mm -hmm. and translate the findings and the relevance for uh, the classroom. Right. Uh, and I just think there needs to be much more of that, to mm -hmm. be honest. Mm -hmm. you know, it's happening, but, but the impact is much, much less than everyone thought it would be by now, given all of the research that's been going on and all the findings that have been happening. Okay, so you think researchers in corpus linguistics should kind of frame their results in a way that would be accessible to language yeah, teachers? Yeah, yeah, I guess it's about <coughs> um, transferability, uh -huh. you know, uh, <coughs> a lot of people do corpus linguistics. Um, as an end in itself, because mm -hmm. they, they want to describe better the language. Mm -hmm. That's great. Uh, but I think uh, there needs also to be uh, more and more uh, transferability, where you're taking uh, what's found out about the language, really interesting things, mm -hmm. and then using corpus linguistics, not for an end in itself, but as a means to an end, to, to mm -hmm. enhance uh, the information we have about language, the language that we teach, mm -hmm. so that you know maybe uh, if, if, if you're equipped with this information, then that will enhance mm -hmm. your teaching. You know that these are more commonly used phrases or forms or verbs mm -hmm. uh, in this context and so on. That could really enhance how you teach and particularly that it could enhance um, the materials. Right. You know, mm -hmm. so uh, now uh, a lot of publishers recognize this and more and more materials are being based on mm -hmm. real language and findings about language. Right. But yeah, relative to the amount of research that's been going on for so many years in corpus linguistics, right. the, the trickle down is very small, it's very relatively. Small. And that's acknowledged by a lot of people that people 20 years ago said this will revolutionize how we teach. Yeah. It hasn't. It hasn't yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. So what are some other benefits and challenges of using uh, corpus linguistics or teaching pragmatics as opposed to other methods? Well, I suppose in the context of language teaching, uh, the real challenge is how well equipped the teacher is to interpret or use findings from corpus linguistics or pragmatics based research. And then how teachable is that? You know? So on one level, are they equipped and aware of pragmatic meaning? Mm -hmm. And 
and then are they equipped in terms of how to teach it? So I think a lot of our pre-service or our initial teacher education programs for English language teaching, we prepare the students how to teach in the classroom, how to ask the right questions, how to ask concept questions, how to manage the class. We, we want them to know uh, all of the meta language, the, the, the grammar, mm -hmm. um, to understand the vocabulary system. And pragmatics kind of gets left maybe for if I have time at the end, or mm -hmm. in most cases it doesn't. It's not even on the syllabus. Mm -hmm. So a lot of grammar books don't really attend to that important level of contextual meaning. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I guess that that's that's a big challenge uh, is how to raise teacher awareness. Mm -hmm. Uh, like they, they can live without corpus linguistics if someone man, if someone brings the findings of corpus linguistics to the materials. Mm. But I think it, it's usually important to understand pragmatics if you're mm -hmm. going to have successful interactions. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, it, it comes back to good, uh, rounded uh, initial teacher education program. So mm -hmm. the MA in TESOL or the undergraduate program that's preparing the teachers needs to focus on the pragmatic uh, information and meaning uh, around the structures that are being taught as well. Okay. Um, could you tell us a little bit about some projects being carried out in the IVAX Research Center? Um, well, I guess there are, there, there are many. and it, it, It's a research center that I set up um, in my college, Mary Mackle College, which is part of the University of Limerick in Ireland. And originally the idea of IVAX was you know, there are one or two people who are interested in corpus linguistics or pragmatics in a department, and then you've got everybody else interested in all their other things. So it was a way of connecting people who had this common interest, mm -hmm. the two or three people in each department, and linking them all up and making a kind of a, a critical mass of people, and then we'd, we'd meet every year, and then we'd have this big conference every two years. And so there are lots of individual pieces of research going on all of the time and then we'll have like PhD students who come, some visiting PhD students, we have some students who come and they do PhDs with us and so there's always a lot going on. People are gathering um, their own data very often or they're using some of the corpora that we actually have gathered in the past. Um, the main research project that I've been involved in um, over the last four years has been with Cambridge University Press where I've been involved in the English Profile Project mm -hmm. where we've been trying to profile how uh, grammar develops over the CEFR levels. So mm -hmm. what can a student, what grammar can a student at A1 do? What grammar at, a, mm -hmm. at, at A2, what grammar can a student do? And so on. And the interesting thing connecting that with pragmatics is that we're finding that uh, while they know a form early on, that they, they don't really know its full meaning, potential and its pragmatics until much later. So often a form that they take on board, at, even at A1, mm -hmm. they're still learning new things, right. new meanings of that same form mm -hmm. um, as they go up even to sea level. And pragmatics is really the core part of that. So learning the different, uh, I guess, pragmatic meanings uh, mm -hmm. that go with any particular form. Uh, like for example, they know um, uh, the use of will at a very low level. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then the same form could be used at sea level to talk about something totally different. Like right. children will always find a way of getting out, mm -hmm. uh, you know, talking about typicality. Right, right. Like, you know, they can use that form at A1, but they don't have that level of meaning in mm -hmm. And to wrap up our, our interview today, um, many of our readers are graduate students and uh, young researchers, so I was wondering if there are some books or papers that you would suggest for new pragmatics researchers who want to learn more about corpus linguistics and teaching. Um, off the top of my head, <laughs> um, I guess I, I, you can I'm talk more about familiar your own books. With, with my own books, but I, I would love if they read my books like uh, Corpus Classroom, mm -hmm. uh, which I wrote with Michael McCarthy and Ronald Carter, and that really was written for teachers mm -hmm. to explain the body of work that's been done over the years mm -hmm. in Corpus Linguistics and what that means for teaching. Mm -hmm. So it looks at vocabulary, grammar, pragmatics, 
you know, it, it, I think it's a really important work to read yeah. if you're a teacher and you want to find out more about this area. Mm -hmm. It's written for you. Uh, it's meant to explain you from the basics. Mm -hmm. It doesn't expect that you're going to come out necessarily as an expert, but that you would have gained expertise and understanding in the area and maybe gained enthusiasm to even go on and do some research yourself. Mm -hmm. um, another book I wrote with um, my colleague Brian Clancy and uh, Svenja Adolfs based mm -hmm. in Nottingham. It's called Intr Introducing Pragmatics in Use. Mm -hmm. And we found that so many of the pragmatics books, like pragmatics is about language in use, but they're not based on language in use. So we wanted to write a book that would use real language right. To explain the basics of pragmatics mm -hmm. uh, and that has a lot <clears throat> in it uh, for language teachers as well it's got um, particular chapters that are focused on language teaching and particular uh, context of context of use um, so I suppose that that's a bit uh, conceited of me to no to point, not at all point we definitely agree with these suggestions <laughs> okay well I think that's it for today I'd like to thank you again very much for being here with us and doing this interview with us My pleasure. I hope our Belt readers will enjoy the first edition of our interviews with linguists.